Hi children, it's Grandma Carla with more of our stories for the pilgrims, of the pilgrims. The pilgrims could hardly wait until morning to begin building the town. It was scarcely daylight when they loaded their axes and guns and saws and hammers on the boat and rowed to shore. First, we will build a large log house at the foot of the hill, said Governor Carver. It will be strong and safe, and we can all live there while we are building our own houses. While some measured the space for the common house, others went to the forest to cut trees. You could hear their axes ring from morning until night. They had no horses to help them, and their hands must do all the work. So they dragged and rolled the logs from the forest. John Howland, called Giles Hopkins, Francis, and John Billington, loved Brewster and several others. Come, boys, he said, bring your sharp knives, and we will go to the pond and cut rushes to thatch the roof. William Bradford saw them start, and he shouldered his gun and went with them. If Indians should come, one man could not protect so many children. When they came to the pond, they cut the long rushes and tied them in bundles to carry them back to the men. Once they heard the wild yell of Indians and sometimes the howl of wolves in the forest, but they did not come near. It was Christmas Day when the first logs were cut and in three weeks the common house was finished. It was a rough building with its thatched roof and unplastered walls. The windows were made of oiled paper instead of glass, but it was their own, and the pilgrims felt very happy when it was done. They made a wide street from the shore to the top of the hill. It was named for their old home in Holland, and it's still called Leiden Street. When the common house was finished, the pilgrims began to build their little cottages on each side of Leiden Street. There were 19 families for which to provide. John Alden was to live with Captain Standish and help him build his house. Other men who were alone would live with those who had families. The winter grew colder and more bitter. There were many days when it was so stormy, no work could be done on the houses. Food was scarce, and every day some of the men tramped through the deep snow in search of game. Often they returned nearly frozen and with empty game bags. The pilgrims were often wet and cold, and they did not have proper food. Do you wonder that many of them became sick and died? Rose Standish was the captain's young wife. Her sweet face and gentle loving manner had made her very dear to the pilgrims. If any were homesick and lonely, Rose seemed to know best how to cheer them. She was always planning little comforts or pleasures for others. But Rose was not so strong and well as the others. Miles Standish sighed as he saw her grow more weak and pale every day. My poor, poor little Rose, he said, you are too frail a fat flower for this rough wild life. I shall be better when I leave the ship and breathe the sweet, fresh air of the earth and the woods, she said. So, as soon as the common house was finished, Miles Standish gently lifted Rose into the smaller boat and took her to the shore. He carried her in his strong arms to the new log house and laid her upon a little cot. The brave captain trembled with fear as he saw her flushed face and held her fevered hand. He knew an enemy had come that he could not conquer. A few more days of suffering, and then Miles Standish was left alone. Soon William Bradford became very ill, and then Goodman White, Mistress Allerton, and many others. In the common house were long rows of white cots where lay suffering men and women. At last, there came a time when there were but seven well enough to hunt food, care for the sick, and bury the dead. All day, Priscilla moved quietly about, bathing fevered faces, or with cool hands rubbing the pain from some aching head, or she bent over the coals of the fire making broth or toast for the sick or cooking for those who nursed themselves. At night, when only a dim candle lighted the room, Dr. Fuller or Miles Standish went from bed to bed, giving a cool drink to one or turning a heated pillow for another. 
Off in a cup was placed in the hand of one of the weary nurses, and Priscilla would whisper, Drink this hot broth. It will give you strength to help others. If it were their white-haired elder who was on watch, she would beg him to lie down and rest for an hour while she took his place. No, no, Priscilla, he would say. You cannot work all day and watch at night. Take your rest, child. You need it much. Then she would go back to her bed, stopping to smooth a pillow or speak a cheery word to someone too ill to sleep. But even tending nursing could not bring health and life to all. Tender nursing. Every day there was a new grave to be made on Coles Hill. At last came a morning when Priscilla could not rise. She was burning with fever and in her sleep talked of her old home in France. She thought she was a little girl playing with baby Joseph. She could not even understand when one by one her mother, father, and brother were laid under the snow in the hill. The pilgrims were afraid to have the Indians see so many graves. Perhaps they would attack the town if they knew that there were so few of the white men left. So late at night, a little group of men carried their sad burden up the hill. When the grave was filled, they covered it over with snow so the Indians might not see it so easily. In a few weeks, half of the little band of pilgrims lay buried on Coles Hill. Those that remained alive found comfort in the fact that their departed friends had gone to be with the Lord. Oh my, such a sad time when so many were sick that first winter in Plymouth. There's no pictures, but we have our questions. It says, fill in the blanks. The pilgrims first built a blank to live in. The pilgrims first built a blank to live in. The children cut blank from the pond. The children cut blank from the pond. The wide street they made is named Blank Street. The wide street they made is named Blank Street. The winter was hard and Blank was one of the first to die. The winter was hard and blank was one of the first to die. Soon, only blank people were well enough to care for others. Soon, only blank people were well enough to care for others. In a few weeks' time, blank of the pilgrims had died. In a few weeks' time, blank of the pilgrims had died. And this is Grandma Carla, and I love you.